about halfway across. <laughs> we're here. We're <laughs> We're here at the Burlington Northern running a 70 car unit double stack train. It's hard to believe that it's working. And as you'll probably see, it's not always working. We're stretched out around the reverse loop at Sky Comish at the moment. Uh-oh, our train has come apart over here, just slightly. We've got helpers, both human and locomotive. And animal. And animal. This, these three locomotives here are the mid-train helpers. They're coming out of the back track in Sky Comish. And the head end is way down towards the index loop. And here it comes, out of the index loop. I'll see if I can blow up the, the camera a little bit. There we go. So that's the head end of the train. And here is the helper units. This is all one train, folks. 70 well cars. Now that is seriously cool. Not to mention nerve-wracking. We have four Four locomotives on the front and three mid-train helpers. Now you can see the two sets of locomotives passing each other. This is all the same train. And somehow we haven't derailed at least for the last five minutes. I hear the end of the train behind me, so I'll show you that. This is what we call the Rainbow Bridge. Comes across the aisleway. You can see the aisleway there. And that's the end of the train right there. And of course we have the required end of train flasher. I don't know if you can see the other train flasher. I can see it, but I don't know if you can see it. Now this is a long train. Now the, the as you can see, the mid-train helpers are just going around the loop up at index. But over here, the front end of the train is going across the trestle and into the tunnel. Got a couple of uh, Santa Fe war bonnet repaints. Well, not repaints, I guess they're legacy paints that weren't repainted that are at the head end. Those are the new scale trains, weathered units. We're not going too fast because we've got a 70 car train here and we don't want it to derail in case that wasn't obvious. So now you can see the end of the train is back over there. So I guess it's time for me to move to a different location. Here, I'll put up the uh, rainbow bridge. We won't be needing this anymore. And you can see why we call it the rainbow bridge. 
because we painted it like a rainbow for when we're standing up and going underneath it. So back to our double stack train. There it is, going across the trestle, past the rock cliffs that were built by Eric Van Nuys to represent something like the needles in Colorado. Oh, that's a nice view, isn't it? We got Robin Peel there in the back who's running the mid train helpers. Hello. Seven the road onto main two off the highway. A little bit of, uh, there was a little bit of um, graffiti on that one container. All right, well, you get the idea. That's the uh, main part of the train uh, going across the trestle. Now, this is the front end, which is going out of sight because the engines are already down in the delta yard. So let's go back and to the trestle so we can see the mid-train helpers go across while the front end is coming towards us at delta. That's going to be another very cool shot. There in the distance, you can see the head end. I'm going to really blow it up there for you. That's Magnus at the uh, front there running the head end, four units. They're coming right at us, and they're going through a crossover to take the siding and delta. That's a long story why they're doing that. So if I zoom back out, you can see that, oops, uh-oh. I knew we couldn't carry this on too long without a problem. Something has come off. Oh yeah. The train is broken in the middle by our same paperclip car. It sounds like we have too much tension in it. No, it, it, it looks like it it looks like it caught on Oh it caught on the rock here. On the rock. Yeah. Right here. This is, uh, yeah, that's more is that is that connected? Uh yeah, maybe this one's small. You think it came off the track there? Yeah. It's going downhill, so you can probably yeah, straight can. just go ahead and straighten it out in Delta. If you pull out of the tunnel, that'd be great. Um, okay, I'll go up to the pole. You got two, some stuck in the tunnel here. Yeah. I thought we were good for yeah. the tension, but well, maybe well, not. we'll see. Yeah. So this is the uh, head end of the second half of the train, carefully going into the tunnel. You'll be able to watch this operation later in a regular regular video that I'm partly going to be taking from inside one of the containers. Ah, this is the promising view I was telling you about with the locomotives coming at us and the locomotives coming across the trestle. How about that? Hi to those of you who are joining us live. It's not uh, going too well, but it, it's, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? It's not every day you run a 70 car train. So while we're waiting for them to straighten that out, I'll show you the rest of the, the basement. This is a 30 by 24 foot 
model railroad. And the main line run, depending on how you measure it, is between 250 and 500 feet. This is some very nice plaster rock work that is, among other things, a tribute to some of my friends who were into rock climbing. This is one of the new Scale Trains anniversary paint scheme locomotives, which among other things has rotating wheel bearings, which I can't show you here because we're not moving, but as soon as they start up again, you'll be able to see that. On the other side of that rock wall is the, or the rock, rock cliffs, is the Cascade Copper Mine. And we have some loaded hoppers that need to be taken down to the Delta, uh, the Delta Yard to interchange with the standard gauge. All right, things look promising. At least the front end is moving. The rear end is not moving. Oh, yes, it is. All right, now we have the front end and the rear end moving. Sort of. Now the front end is not moving. Hang, hang in there. At some point, we'll get this thing moving again properly. Now we have the front end stuck at the south end of Delta Yard, and we have the mid-train helpers inside a tunnel. That's pretty cool. Let's go see how the elk are doing. And the elk are just fine. The elk have been paying absolutely no attention to any of this. They're going to just stay there grazing. <laughs> there were three, three of us that pooled all of our intermodal equipment for this 70 car train. And some of the new intermodal equipment, I have to say, is really, really nice. Look at these weathered 20 foot container cars. I love the way they look. Just beautiful. Oh, look over here, there's a Ned Lloyd. Look at the nice weathering job on that. Hopefully you can see that uh, well in the live stream. I'm just gonna quickly show you some of these containers, well cars, while we have a chance. This is a very unusual log load that a friend of mine um, made from some sort of a bush and it's based on a prototype photograph of the, almost the exact same arrangement and now we have uh, another beautifully weathered set of 20-foot cars we seem to have had a major problem down on this end oh look there's a, another great weathering job Looks like Aiden has joined us. I'm hearing a third voice over there. Ooh, look at that K-Line container. Beautiful. I never used to think I cared much for intermodal trains, but I'm, I'm getting there. It's an acquired taste. Of course, you see a lot of these J.B. Hunt and Swift cars. Now it seems like something's going on. Now we've got our we got our helper locomotives coming out of the tunnel. Very good. I guess this is my chance to show you the rotating roller bearing caps. Can you see that?
Very nice. I'm going to go back where we were before and see what it looks like, and then maybe we can take a different part of the layout in. Still getting this container train across the big trestle, the big steel trestle. And we're still re-railing cars that went around that corner. Yeah, we're good. Well done, thank you. Look at that. It's kind of a nice view. If I stable myself here. Six? Yeah. You can see the cars going across the steel trestle in the foreground. And with any luck, you can see the front end of the train in the rear ground. Oh, yeah. This is model railroading. Too bad we only have a 70 car train because now we're out of cars in the foreground. I guess we could follow that into the tunnel, couldn't we? Why not? What throttle setting are you guys at? Six and eight. Six and eight. So the front locomotive consist is at a speed step six out of 28, and the rear is at eight, a little higher. I'm not sure exactly why that is, but it has to do with the speed matching. Trial and error. And, yeah, just trial and error. We finally figured out what we were doing. Now, it just strikes me that as nice as this view is, we've got the train stretched out over there, and it might make sense to go to a different part of the layout. Although that's not a bad view from right here. We're not, are we getting the whole train? Oh, there we go. It's not the whole train, but it's a, a good two-thirds of it anyway. All right, is that enough for the moment? Let me just go around to the other part of the room. I think there's another very cool shot. There's the end again. Can you see that end of train flasher? Very important. Now I know, those of you that know this train layout know it's set in 1973 when there were no container trains, but once in a while we have to digress. So here's the front end. So what do you want? These legacy Santa Fe's going through Ballard by the Ballard uh, passenger station. Very good. Well, okay, good. So now I wanted to go back. Well, fine. So here's the, here's the whole train. Here's the mid-train helpers. See them over there? Now, I, I kind of missed my great shot. The, the shot I wanted to take was through here. Oh, this is still good. See, now we have the train curving around in the foreground and off to the right in the rear ground. Of course, the front of the, the rear of the train is is just entering Delta Yard in Everett, and the front of the train is entering Interbay Yard in Seattle. That's the trouble with model railroading. It's hard to get the distance between towns high enough. This is the Dravis Street overpass here. I guess it's as good a place as any to watch this train come in. Turn it around and then leave it here in this thing. Yeah, that's a good plan. I guess we should, uh... The only trouble with this view, you can see the car repair shed on the left and the engine terminal on the right, is we're not seeing the rest of the train. But we are seeing the motive power, so what are you going to do? I guess we'll just watch the motive power go by and then I'll show you the rest of the train. How's that? Sorry about all the shaking of the camera. Well, there we go. The, the engines are going underneath, underneath the Dravis Street overpass. Yeah. And that's the rest of the train, stretched all out across the layout room. The rear end is here in Delta Yard with our favorite little end of train flasher. We're going through Mukilteo. I don't remember, but yeah, that's the thing. 
We're coming along by Edmonds, Carkey Park, Golden Gardens, and Mid Train Helpers. Did I show you the, ro the rotating wheel bearings? So cool. I know I showed that to you before, but I can't, I can't help myself. Just too cool. The only thing left is now they're starting to make locomotives with fans that turn on the top. So this is the Emerson Street overpass between Queen Anne and Magnolia neighborhoods. This is the Time Oil, oil storage facility. The Interbay engine terminal on the left. The Interbay car repair shed on the right. And this train is stretched all the way out. This wall here is about 33 feet long. And we got the front end of the train on the right side going through downtown Seattle. And we have the middle of the train, mid train helpers, helpers coming in the left side. I like that Haypag Lloyd container too. Nice. Or did I show you that already? I probably did. So these are the mid-train helpers. If I come back here, maybe we can see the, yeah, you can see the, uh, well, barely. The train on the right-hand side going through Ballard, and on the left side it's going through Interbay. Yeah, if I go up, maybe that'll be easier to see. Oh yeah, that's a good view. This is what you call a long train. Ridiculously long. We're just doing this for fun. Because we know we all know model railroading is fun. Despite the jiggling camera. Again, my apologies. Again, that's the mid-train helper set. And we have two different uh, operators with two different throttles controlling the front end units and the mid-train helper set so that they can maintain some slack. And that's why Robin is standing up ahead of his locomotives because he's controlling the mid-train helpers and he wants to make sure there's slack somewhere in between the front end and the mid-train helpers. Otherwise we get the derailments like we had before. So he's just testing, testing the pressure. Now this is the train coming into Stacy Street Yard just south of the downtown tunnel. Yeah, we lost our signal there, sorry. I don't know why. Happens. I'm actually surprised. Uh, it's been quite a while since I did a live stream and I think, I think our Wi-Fi is improved since the last time, but I did just get connected over by that other wall. Oh, I was going to show you downtown Seattle area going through downtown. Well, I'm sorry again. I got too close to the cement wall on that side of the room, and apparently we don't have the best coverage there. So we'll come over here and watch it from this side. Now we've come all the way down to South Seattle, Tukwila. That's the head end of our train coming around the reverse loop. This is uh, the model, of the building there is Isaacson Steel and some other miscellaneous industries in South Seattle. Back there is the cement plant, uh, Lone Star Cement. And there's the head end going across the Duwamish River crossing, doing a U-turn back. And you can see it's coming back upon itself. Thanks, I'm glad it's working again. Appreciate all of you being here live. That's kind of a kick. We haven't done that for a while. See, there's the camera. Uh, the camera car is that first white container. It has a little camera in there, and we'll we'll see if we get any footage from it. So, as you can see, the train is turning around on itself. This is all one train. 
kind of amazing. Somehow it's not derailing at the moment. It doesn't mean it won't. Okay. While uh, while we're while we're sitting here watching this, I wish I could show that to you closer up, but I'm on the other side of the peninsula. How about if I zoom in a little bit? That's cool. That That's really amazing how far away that the meeting point is. Oh. I think I'm going to go over to the other side of the room and show you the other end of this. Pretty cool. Hopefully I won't get disconnected on that side of the layout. Yeah, there's some pressure on us. Here we go. I'm going to keep the camera up high so hopefully you won't get disconnected. There's the front end coming through Stacy. Now that we've turned around and we're headed north again. And the rear end is back there where, where Robin is fixing the derailment. And now we can just follow the rear end back in. So again, this is all one train. turning back on itself in the South Seattle reversing loop. How about that? Here's the uh, end of train flasher. Hopefully you can see that. And if I raise the camera up, you can see the whole reverse loop. There, now I'm holding it on the ceiling. And there's the mid-train helpers. We like those locomotives, don't we? Oh, oh that's the reversing loop. So the reversing loop starts right where the mid-train helpers is. If I just push this forward a little bit, you might fix it. And it might not. Yeah. Whoops. I mean to jiggle. I won't go into the technical difficulties associated with figuring out where the right place to put the gaps in the rails are for an automatic reversing circuit in a DCC layout. layout. At least I won't go into it right now. Right now we're just having fun. These are the new scale trains, uh, well cars that just came out recently, and they have some outstanding detail on them. Look at that. Hopefully, you can see that on the video. Very nice. I personally really like these container tank cars, but in the prototype, you don't see them too often. You do see them occasionally. And as if you've watched, if you've looked at my blog at all, you've seen that recent, just very recently, Magnus, the tall guy, who's here today, he just finished building this nice thing from a Walter Walther's kit. It's a, it's a um, guardhouse for the intermodal terminal, the South Seattle intermodal, intermodal terminal, and you can, you can see the, the road, the, the trucks and the intermodal cars there. They belong to uh, a train called the Pacific Zip, uh, which was the Burlington Northern's first intermodal train. Of course, what we're running today is a modern double stack train of the current era, which has nothing to do with this layout normally. So this is the drop down bridge. I'm just gonna drop it down. And you can see that it just drops down because we're done with that reversing move. 
So now we can easily walk in here, see the Lone Star Cement Company, which has a whole bunch of weathered cement cars that need to be distributed around the world. And we will get to that next time we have an operating session, as well as a very cool propeller car that one of my neighbors built for fun on an old Atherin flat car. Very nice. He's a ship modeler, so of course he had some extra propellers to use on that. Here's the back side of Magnus's uh, gatehouse office for the intermodal terminal. Very cool. I think we might be nearing the end of this. We've got the train pretty much stopped. And I think we'll call it a day. I hope you've enjoyed this, those of you that have joined us online. And uh, we'll sign off now. But keep, keep an eye out for some of the future videos that I'm going to publish on the YouTube channel here. Because I've got a lot of footage of this train, including taken from the uh, container, the camera container. Let me show you that one more time while you're still here. Um, where is that container? Oh, there it is. So I took a 48-foot container, and it happened to have a top that was removable, which is just perfect for uh, setting a, a, a cheap spy cam in there. And you can see I just set it in there, and I cut a hole in the front for the camera lens. And uh, that's, that's in the front, so it's looking it's looking straight ahead at the front end of the train, just like this, only it's down at the level of the container. And like I said, I'll publish some more videos of the view from that. It's not a very high resolution footage like the one you're looking at here. Although with this being a live stream, I don't know how high resolution it is. But anyway, that'll be fun. The other nice thing about this container car is that I can take the camera out and put it in a more typical 1973 um, type cars, like a wood chip gondola or something like that. Oh, this is working out pretty well. I never thought of following the train along like this. Now we've just left the Interbay Yard and we're heading uh, out over bridge number four, the Salmon Bay Bridge, originally built by the Great Northern. The Burlington Northern Santa Fe was, was going to replace this bridge until recently they decided it was just going to cost too much, so they're, they're just continuing to maintain the old bridge. I think it might be 100 years old at this point, but they're still using it. This is a, a, not a particularly good model of it, it's just a kind of a representation of it, let's say. And now we're coming through Ballard. Oh, this is just getting better and better. I thought we were going to end the live stream, but they keep running the engines. Oh, I remember. I was, I was showing you the view from the... I lost my focus there for a second. I'm showing you the view from this camera car. Um, only in a live mode. Of, on my cell phone here. Okay, so now we're heading along the double track uh, shoreline north of Seattle and south of Everett and going past Golden Gardens Park and Karki Park. And if you looked at my channel, you saw just this morning I published a video of a container train going through Karki Park, very similar to this one. It had five engines on the head, though. We only have four here. So, anyway, I don't know what these characters are doing, but why do we care? We're watching these engines, right? This is an awful lot of fun, if you ask me. Okay, so now we're coming up onto Muckleteo, and those two boxcars are in the Muckleteo team track, which I made up as a place that we need to 
to, uh, uh, you know, support during an operating session. That's like a 56 or 57 Chevy. If you know which, let me know. My, my uncle had one of those cars when I was growing up, so that's, that's a tribute to him. He also is the guy who got me involved, interested in model railroading when I was a kid. So this whole thing is his fault, like I like to say. Tim Taylor isn't here today, but he often comes over and he's been working on this beautiful grant line kit for the Cop Cascade Copper Company on the narrow gauge, which is right above the Delta Yard. There's our camera car again. I'm pretty sure the battery's gone out on this camera car, so uh, that's part of why I'm doing it like this now, because I don't think we're capturing the footage anymore. We've been running this train for about an hour and a half, I think, by now. This slow speed, it takes quite a while. Hi from West Australia, nice to have you here. What time is it there? Thanks to all of you for joining. I don't have my reading glasses on, so I haven't been able to read most of your comments as they come in on the phone. Oh, good. That's not too bad. 5.15 in the morning. It's not too good either. But. So this is a fictitious bridge with a fictitious log dump at Weyerhaeuser Mill B, which was a real place. And now we're taking the siding in Bayside Yard in Everett. And that's probably because Magnus wants to put away his equipment. So there's come a point where we just have to stop running this train. But look at that paint job on these Santa Fe engines. Excellent. He's blowing for the grade crossing even. Very nice. I know I've said it a couple times, but I apologize for the shaky video. Hopefully it's worth it anyway. I don't know if you can hear, but it's even got the bell ringing. Pay no attention to these car cards. We're just running this train for the fun of it. What car cards? Yeah, what car cards, exactly. Now this is a little incongruous because some of these cars are from the 1970s and we're running a modern train, but... Because I haven't seen one of these all rail cars in a long time. Not to mention uh, GP9 number 1799. This is one of the this is one of the Jeeps that was specially outfitted for the uh, jet job, taking parts up to the Boeing plant at Payne Field in Muckleteo, where they made the 747s. You probably know all that. I'm just rattling along. Okay, so there we go. The engines are going into the tunnel at Bayside which of course is fictitious. There is no tunnel at Bayside. And I think they're gonna stop it so that he can unpack. But his, his cars are halfway down the train, so maybe we'll get the engines coming out of the tunnel. That would be a cool shot. Here we go. All right. Nice. Oh, yes. Do the brakes? Nice. That was that. I think that probably is it for us. Hear the engine spooling down? We just got to this Snohomish River Bridge and they stopped. See, there's the Snohomish River Bridge. That's the trestle we were watching earlier. But I'll just go back to the tunnel portal so you can hear that engine noise. So oh, nice.
There's no Santa Fe anymore, but there still is the Burlington Northern Santa Fe, so we can live with it. Yes. Oh, yes. Very nice. Oh, now they, for some reason they're moving again. If I get really close, can we see these rotating? Yeah, see those rotating axle bearings? That is seriously cool. I'm sorry. I think somebody is also about to make rotating fans. Um, but I haven't seen one of those yet. Look at that paint job. Nice weathering. Thank you, scale trains. We appreciate it. All your hard work. I'm trying to think of... I mean, now we're back in the light. The cameraman is always looking for... Always looking for uh, good lighting. That wasn't the best lighting, but it'll do. I was just trying to show you that there, there are some, see here's some engines back in Argo Yard. See those fans at the top of the engine? Somebody's making a locomotive now with little tiny motors that have those fans rotating just like they do on the real locomotive. So that's the only thing that I can think of that's even more crazy than rotating axle bearings. Although, this, um, this rotating beacon on the switcher is another crazy thing. If I can you find got one it. here, too. Yeah, we've got one there, too. Well, that's, that's a single LED flashing rotating beacon. Wait, give me a throttle and I'll show you the other. Can I have a, can I have a throttle from over there? It looks like they're uh, breaking the, the train down. So if you were here to see a 70 car train, that ship has sailed. But I do want to show you this. So this is locomotive, and I'm just going to select it here. See if I can. Oh, there we go. Let's start it up. Can you hear this all right? I'm not hearing anything. There we go. Now I'm hearing it. Oh, very good. Okay, now get ready. I'm going on the rotating beacon. Now this is four little LED lights, micro LEDs. And it's just so cool. So it looks like it's actually rotating. I turned on the headlight too, just for fun, or the backup light. So, so let's just look at that from the top. See, that's the four LEDs, and there's a circuit in there making them rotate. I mean, that is just... I've been a model railroader for my entire life, which is a long time. And this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. A working rotating beacon. Well, in addition to those uh, bearings, ro the roller bearings that rotate. Okay, guys, this has been fun, but i got to stop. I'll, I'll see you all later. Please enjoy my channel, and, have, uh, and I wish you much fun with trains. Goodbye. Here, I'll give you my face. Now I have to figure out how to stop it. There we go.